Stop watching if you don't want spoilers for Moral Oral. With that out of the way I would like to thank Doomshare for my new gay stills their Twitter will be in the description of this video and in the comments please show them support because they regret at Art Oak. Let's get to the video now. So recently I've had a bit more free time on my hands since I quit my job by purposely throwing the company printer out the fifth story window. And with that free time I've decided to recently re-binge an old show I saw a bit of a few years ago. More oral. <laughs> I know some people might not know this show too much since it's one of those adult swim shows that got cancelled too early, so it's kind of stayed a little unknown, but recently it seems to have a bit of a spike of popularity online, which is genuinely great for the show. More Oral originally starts off as a typical religious kid show, but it's a comedy for adults, with some small dark elements until its second season that gets a bit dark until... And then the third season is almost complete story and character focused. There's definitely a lot to be said about this show's characters and themes, but today I'm just going to be only talking about the main family, the Puppingtons. That consists of Clay Puppington, Laberta Puppington, Oral Puppington, and finally Shaping Puppington. Later on, Black Puppington gets added, but honestly, who cares about him? But Later on in this video, we'll be focusing on the main character Oral and his father Clay, since the show focuses on their relationship more and more in the series. I'm going to be going on from season 1 all the way to the final episode, plus the special prequel episode Trust. So I'm going to be analyzing scenes that stand out from episodes and full episodes themselves. So let's buckle up with the first season. Reason is the enemy of faith, my friend. So in season 1, the Puppington family is just the stereotypically perfect American family. Well, through the cynical lens of an adult swim show, so that means the father is a casual alcoholic that stays in a study all day, and the mother is a neglectful housewife who only cares about cleaning the entire house while their two kids are blissfully unaware about the cracks in their parents' relationship. To say that Clay and Blubberta are casually neglectful of Oral and Shapey is a complete understatement, sadly. Shapey literally always plays with dangerous objects, and Oral is always given downright awful advice that usually leads up to messing things up accidentally, and getting disciplined by Clay at the end of the episode, and is also always given some stupidly bad life advice from Clay. The family stays like this up until episode 8 and 10, where the cracks of Clay and Blaberta's marriage are taken pretty seriously in a fight scene in episode 8, where they both fight over how Shapey is still being treated like a baby at 7 years old, and about Clay's alcoholism. La, 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 la. That kid gets more action than I do. <laughs> I am still weaning him, Clay. Blaberta, he's 7! He should not be using your milk to wash down his meatloaf, which I pay for by working that stinking dead-end job! <laughs> I am so sick of your complaining. Why don't you just quit your job and quit being such a crybaby? <laughs> oh, thanks for the sympathy! You have never been on my side! <laughs> Why would I be on the side of a self-destructive alcoholic? I can't believe I give you the privilege of satisfying me every night. It's sad to see that Oral actually notes this down as a way to be mature, and he subsequently follows Clay into a study and gets his hands on some of Clay's alcohol, which leads him into becoming an alcoholic temporarily, but for the rest of the episode. I know I'm reading too much into one scene, but this scene really sets up the season 1 finale, the best Christmas ever. The Best Christmas Ever is an absolutely depressing episode. There's not a lot of words I can think at the moment other than this is just a 
miserable Christmas special, and why the hell would Adult Swim air this as the first episode of the series? This Christmas special starts off with the Puppingtons doing the usual Sunday setup of heading to church and such, but this morning Reverend Putty tells a sermon that strikes a nerve with Blaberta, resulting in her and Clay arguing late at night, which is just a whole depressing mess of Clay finally learning that, yeah, Shapey isn't 100% his real kid, and Blaberta cheated on him and now she wants a divorce. This entire scene of the two fighting is split between Oral overhearing the argument and misinterpreting it as Shapey being the second coming of Christ, and getting excited about it as he expectedly would. The contrast of Oral being completely overjoyed that his brother is the second coming of Christ and his parents' marriage falling apart just down the hall is so heartbreaking, and it's even sadder when on Christmas morning, Oral goes to wake up his parents with the exciting news, but... All there is is just Blaberta, sitting alone in the room while having this dead-eyed stare. She's obviously been up all night just thinking about her life and thinking about what led up to this moment, while Oral assumes that his parents are still sleeping. Sleeping hard enough to forget to put his and Shapey's presents under the Christmas tree. There's a scene split of Oral drumming for Shapey and Blaberta just sitting in her bed in her room all alone with the same dead-eyed stare until the scene wraps up with a single tear rolling down her face before cutting back to her kids, who are still completely oblivious to their parents' failing marriage just down the hall. Oral goes to take Shapey to get him a Christmas gift from a pizza place heard in an ad earlier in the episode, since there's no presents under the tree, and this is probably one of the most bittersweet parts in the episode to me, but Oral gets Shapey a gift card that's barely worth five dollars, but he wants to make his perceived Christ child happy with what he thinks will make him happy, but Shapey gets sidetracked and proceeds to destroy Manger setup since he's just a little demon kid, with Bilberta eventually coming to pick the two kids up and bluntly breaking the news to Oral that her and Clay are splitting up and that if Oral wants to spend Christmas with his dad, then he should go find him himself. Of course, Oral goes to find his dad at the town bar, who's just drowning his problems away with liquor while Oral sits all alone in the snow, praying to God for a good last two minutes of Christmas that obviously doesn't come. I know I spent a while on that one episode, but the best Christmas ever is the real turning point in more Oral, where the show finally shows its quote-unquote real colors in a heart-wrenching episode of the Puppington family basically falling apart on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. There's just so much to unpack from this episode, like, Christ, this episode was a great season finale with a depressingly sad cliffhanger ending. A few things that always stick out to me are that Clay finally realizing that Liberta cheated and had Shapey, Oral trying his hardest to be a good servant of the second coming of Christ, and finally Liberta just leaving Oral out in the middle of the snow while hugging Shapey and taking him home. Now, I'm not gonna excuse Clay right now since he does some really bad shit later in the series. But I do feel bad for the guy for learning that this kid he didn't want wasn't his, like, at all, and his wife went out and found another man to feel love with. And I'm not excusing Blaberta at all. Cheating is one of the worst things you can do to someone, and especially leaving your son in the freezing cold is one of the worst things you can do as a parent. But she did that after Oral said, But it's Christmas! We can't spend it without him! And I'm gonna game theory this up and say I think she did that because she kinda sees Oral as an impartial party and she has the mindset of, well if you're not with me, uh, I, if you're not gonna just shut up and come home without your dad then you're against me. Go find and spend Christmas with your damn dad. Okay, okay, okay. We should divert our attention from the best Christmas ever since that's just the start of this dysfunctionally depressing family. Season 2 starts off explaining what happened to Oral's parents after the best Christmas ever, by explaining that they're not gonna get divorced because... No, don't say anything. You and Shapey are still young, needy, impressionable children, so your mother and I have decided to stay together, if only for appearances. The last thing we want people to think is that we don't care about our own kids. That's one fact that is none of their business. 
And that's one of the standout things about the Puppington parents. They only really care about their public image, and it's been hinted at before with a few lines. Uh, one I can think of at the top of my head while writing this right now is the line Blaberta says in Maturity. The whole neighborhood's going to think I'm a bad mother. Sorry, Mom. All while Shapey throws a temper tantrum. Mm, quite the mom, really. Another scene that stands out is from Elemental Oral and is probably in the more oral sad compilations. It's when Oral is peeking in on his mom taking care of another family. Yeah, it's weird. It, they explain it in the episode, but eh, it's still weird. Which leads him to realizing that his mom is miserable in his family. But when Oral confronts his mom about taking care of another family, his dad convinces him that Oral's family is totally fine and healthy. The next scene I got here really set some foreshadowing for the future episode help, and a few scenes in nature and numb. That's from Lord's Prayer. So we have Clay sitting alone in his study, getting drunk as usual, but he starts off with only one highball, stating, Still hate her. Still hate her. Still hate her. Tolerator. Tolerator. I think we can context clue who her is, which is obviously Bluberta. That gives us complete confirmation that he hates Bluberta. So now all the small, small moments of him seeming not to be able to stand her lead up to confirming that he just completely hates that bitch and that he tries to think better of her while getting drunk. Just you wait till help, that's gonna explain a ton, I swear, bro. I would get way more into Lord's Prayer, like Oral and Christina's adorable little relationship, but that whole episode is the same old, same old and whole family department. And it's more of a religious satire episode, if I'm being honest. So let's get on to the next scene from Prank. Also, Block and Shapey get switched, but not much happens, but I still need to note it for when we get to Numb. So, praying the episode, not the thing you do in church, is, and I'm summarizing this a lot because I want to get to talking about nature now. Almost everyone in the town is shit. Let's stress out Oral until he tries meditation. The scene in question is when Oral is at his peak stress at the praying bee and shows that he's still really stressed out about a lot of things that have happened to him, especially some lines from Best Christmas Ever. Thankfully, at the end, he de stresses about it, but. It's sad to see that all the shit his family puts him through is obviously affecting him subconsciously and it's sad to see because he's just a little kid. Okay, that's all that really stands out to me in season 2 right now. Now, that there wasn't a lot of scenes because of A, I'm gonna come back and explain a few more scenes when we get to certain episodes in season 3, and B, it's time to talk about nature. Nature starts off with Clay just finishing up disciplining Oral before, suggesting that they both go on a hunting trip together, and even shows Oral the Puppington family gun that's been passed down for generations, before taking the gun away from Oral. We cut to them already packed up for the hunting trip, except when Oral tries to bring actually helpful things, Clay shoes them away except for Oral's lucky shirt. On the drive over, Oral of course tries to talk to his dad because Oral and Clay don't talk to each other. Like at all. Literally. Clay never asks, Hey Oral, how was school? Or, Hey Oral, anything on your mind I can help you with? Give me a break, I'm not a parent, I don't know what the hell they say. And Clay just stays locked up in his study, only ever talking to Oral when it's to lecture him or give him bad advice. Oral and Clay finally get to the nature reserve, and it seems like the first thing Clay sets up is a tiny tent for all his liquor he brought along. Which even confuses Oral, and Clay goes on to say how nice it is to be away from all the- Ah, this is the life, kid! Out in the fresh air, no one telling you what to do or how her day was? Away from the hustle and bustle of nagging? Yeah. <laughs> subsequently drinking another drink just after finishing his first one. The two go out scouting for animals to kill, which makes Oral seriously conflicted on shooting the bunny they find or not. 
And can I just say that the sound design is stunning in this episode, and this scene is the first example of it, with the sound of locusts and crows becoming more and more louder when Oral is thinking about doing what his dad wants. But the sounds back off when Oral just can't do what his dad wants like killing the animals, which leads Clay to drink a lot more. When Oral doesn't kill a deer that's standing right in front of him, Clay pulls him aside and gets angry, saying, Never fraternize with the enemy! Oh, she's so cute! Okay. For the love of God, Pearl, get that poor, wretched creature in your sights and put it out of its misery! Gosh, she looks pretty happy to me. Hap! Happy! Oral, that thing is eating grass. Everyone knows that grass is nature's carpeting. You're not supposed to eat it. You're supposed to judge your neighbors by how neat it looks outside their homes. Before getting more upset and killing the deer after taking a few drinks from his glass. Uh, overjoyed to hear that there's another animal near, Clay drunkenly kills and then cooks and then eats somebody's hunting dog, all while Oral tries to stop him, which leads into the infamous nature rant, after Oral comments on how he's hungry and not wanting to eat someone's hunting dog, all while Clay just drinks more and more while playing around with his gun. I'm just gonna let the rest of the scene play out because I think everyone should see the scene in full because of how depressingly amazing it is. Uh, I think you might be... too drunk. Let me tell you something. Oral drunk is nature. I'm not really comfortable hunting with you right now. You're not comfortable hunting with me? <laughs> Have you ever tried hunting with you? I gotta tell you, Oral. Your cup is always half empty. Now look at me. You should be more like your old man and look on the blight side of life. Blight? I didn't say bright. I said blight. My life is sunny and blight. Bright means the opposite. It means sudden withering death. And that's... Nah. Oh, who am I kidding? My life is full of bright. You mean blight? Oh, God. What's the matter? I hate myself. Why do you quit working on me? She always fools me, Oral. I'll make things better, dear. Drink me. Put me inside you. I'm great. And she chokes me just like every other whore out there. They're all worthless, kid. Every woman. Don't let them get you. All of them want to get you. They just Grab you and pull you into them! And then you're forced to stay in and pull out! Stay in and pull out! And then they cut you! And they grip you finally right where it goes! And then they start squeezing things out! Things that are like weights around your head! You sit there for the rest of your life with nowhere to go! And no one to be! This scene is one of the best written scenes in the entire show because of how scarily accurate it is with Clay screaming to the look of pure terror on Oral's face to the rawness of Clay's rant about how genuinely miserable he is and how much he absolutely hates his life. The way the scene also gets literally darker and darker the more Clay spirals in his rant and how flies cover him to show how truly dead he is inside, it's just... It's stunning animation, honestly. We open up to the next episode with the usual opening, but Oral doesn't look up at God like he usually does. He just continues praying as the gunshot echoes through the forest. Clay isn't harmed at all, but he's furious because the thing Oral actually shot is Clay's last bottles of liquor, which leads to Oral screaming this line at Clay after he constantly gets berated by the drunk. It's because you become a bad person when you drink! 
Clay tries to take off his belt to discipline Oral, but just ends up showing Oral that he's a sad, miserable man who can't even take off his belt and who won't accept help from his kid when he falls down. Clay composes himself before waving his rifle around and doing the worst thing he's ever done in the series. Exactly what I'm doing. Yeah, but you might shoot it off by mistake! There aren't any mistakes either. No mistakes, no accidents, no flub ups, no boners. Look. Don't butt me! <laughs> oh, shit. <clears throat> Clay doesn't care that he just shot his own son in the leg, instead, he blames Oral and gets upset when Oral says he brought a first aid kit along against his father's advice, which also leads him to drink the disinfectant to spite Oral, leading him to finally say, I hate you. Hate away, sister. Hate away. Props to Oral's voice actor Carolyn Lawrence because she nails the disdain Oral has finally built for his dad. Clay passes out, leaving Oral to fend for himself in a bear attack their camp, which makes him finally kill something to save his dad and staying awake for 13 hours, all with an undisinfected leg wound. The entire time, Clay is just sleeping, only waking up once and instead of taking Oral to the hospital, he makes Oral cover his eyes from the sun, until he finally officially wakes up and completely dodges blame for shooting Oral in the leg by saying, You shot me in the leg? No, I didn't. Look. Oh, I don't remember that. So that means it's not my fault. And noticing the dead bear, asking Oral if he killed it, emphasizing that he would be so proud of his son for killing it. But Oral doesn't care about making his dad proud anymore, which leads to him saying that Clay killed the bear instead, which of course satisfies Clay and the two finally get Oral to the hospital and back home. When Blaberta gives Oral breakfast, he asks her, Mom, why did you marry dad? Why? Well, Men have to marry women. Otherwise, if men married men and women married women, we'd all give birth to nothing but fairy sexuals. But why did you marry Dad? Oh, well... <laughs> why not? Which leads to Oral saying that Clay changes when he drinks, but Blaberta corrects him by saying that's his father's true nature coming out when he drinks, pretending to be fine with this change and leaving Oral alone to eat his breakfast, which wraps up the episode. Oh boy, that was a lot. But let's just get down to brass text of this episode. Oral finally sees for the first time how his dad is just a sad and frankly pathetic narcissist that he truly is, which seriously changes their whole dynamic for the rest of the show since now Oral knows his dad is just a bad, nasty person. God, nature is just a complete mess of emotions and please, someone give Oral a hug. This poor kid just got his leg blasted and realized his dad is a raging alcoholic who's horrifically depressed and a terrible person. Season 3 opens up the song No Children by the Mountain Goats, and it perfectly describes Clay and Blaberta's whole marriage. Two awful people who stay together because they refuse to change, or get better, which slowly drags them down more and more into misery. Numb starts off right as Clay and Oral leave for the hunting trip, and goes on until the two get back, so that means this is all about Blaberta, which we never really got an episode all for her. Blaberta watches as Clay and Oral leave for the trip, and we cut to her numbly trying to do the thing housewives do when they're alone. When she's done, she gets a photo book that has pictures of her and Danielle's stop frame. Ooh, yeah, I- I- fuck, I haven't talked about stop frame at all. Okay, let's give a quick rundown on him. So, stop frame has a weird relationship with Clay and Blaberta. He helped Liberta cheat on Clay, which got her pregnant with Shapey, which is also what Stopframe wanted because he's actually in love with Clay and Clay is in love with Stopframe too. Uh, yeah, that was mainly it. Let's get back to Numb. Liberta flips through the picture book, ending up on a picture of Shapey after looking at her being seemingly actually happy with Stopframe until Block runs in screaming. Yeah, I remember how he and Shapey got switched? making Blaberta finally realize that Shapey and Block got switched, so she calls the Pausebule mother so they can switch the kids back. 
Liberta ends up with another kid because Block ends up not running to pop it like Shapey did for Bliberta. So now there's two illegitimate kids in the house. Cake? Cake. Yummy? Yummy. Mine? Mine. <laughs> We cut to Bluberta and Danielle in the town bar together, where Bluberta is shut down and basically told she was used by Danielle so he can get closer to her husband. Bluberta next heads to Reverend Putty, who also turns her down because he's a wimp. <laughs> so she heads to buy herself a jackhammer to do the things housewives do home alone. But she ends up harming herself really bad, so she heads to the hospital where she gets prescribed painkillers by Dr. Potter's wheel who's a bit of a freak for the injury she caused on herself, which starts the cycle of Bluberta causing harm to herself and causing a semi-affair with Dr. Potter's wheel. It's uncomfortably sad to just see her mutilate herself because she wants to feel anything at all. She, she wants to feel loved and needed, so she continues the semi-affair until she tells Dr. Potter's wheel that she doesn't need to harm herself anymore, which just ends everything, leading to Bluberta's quiet realization that Dr. Potter's wheel just didn't care about her at all. Dr. Potter's wheel gets a call from Clay, and let me interject for a second, but... Look at Bluberta's head movements when she hears that Oral got shot. She actually jerks her head to the doctor, but she becomes numb again when she hears that it was Clay who shot him. I think she genuinely does care about Oral because she gives him the fatty breakfast since the poster in the doctor's office says that fatty food is healthy for people. And she seems genuinely concerned for that one second when she hears that he got shot, but I think she's just too desensitized to express that she genuinely cares about him or that she doesn't even know how to be a proper parent to him. We cut to Clay in his study with the handkerchief Bluberta stole from Dr. Potter's wheel, watching Clay walk through the house before overhearing Bluberta and Oral's conversation from the end of nature. But when Bluberta walks out, she breaks down in the middle of the hallway until she realizes that Clay is right in front of her, immediately going back to being numb again while Clay just makes his way to their bedroom, glancing at the photo of his dysfunctional family before laying in the bed with the wall between him and Bluberta as the two stare blankly at the ceiling. Bluberta is just so empty, but deep deep down she's miserable and being with Clay is only exasperating that misery because they both fucking hate each other and aren't gonna divorce or anything like that because they care too much about their public image. So they're just stuck together in a hate-filled marriage. For Grounded, I'm just gonna skim it down a bit because the end is all we really care about. Oral gets grounded from going to church, which drives him to the point of insanity where he dresses up as a church and gets struck by lightning, which kills him for a short time, where he has a brief glimpse of heaven so now he's obsessed with getting a better look at heaven so he dies again, having a much longer, more abstract vision. In this vision, he realizes that he's been the one comforting himself, not church itself, but when he's about to tell everyone his vision, he gets cut off and disciplined by Clay, who literally beats the vision out of him before suggesting they go on the hunting trip. Yeah, season 3 literally jumps all over the place. Trigger is very cut in point, with Clay even stating that he used Doey so that Oral can feel like shit and shoot a gun properly for the hunting trip, so I'm not gonna really talk about Trigger because we already got it straight from Clay's mouth. Housetops to the gutters, from the ocean to the shore. The warning signs have all been bright and garish, far too great in number to ignore. In Help, we learn about Bluberta's upbringing and how she was the only single woman in her friend group, which didn't help her feeling any better since at home she wasn't even allowed in the family choir, with her father being the only person she could barely confide to that and alcohol, but that all changed when she laid her eyes on Clay, who was seemingly a good Christian man who was also single just like her, so Bluberta tried to get to know him more. Are you going to the reception? Oh, no, 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 I couldn't. I don't know anyone. I'm Bluberta. Bluberta Hymantact. I'm Clay. Poppington. 
Clay Poppington. Nice to know you. Now are you going to the reception? Okay. Smooth moves, girl. Liberta finds out that Clay doesn't drink alcohol, which just weirds her out, and they're both just so awkward around each other until Bloberta gets Clay to drink his first highball with the excuses. Isn't drinking a sin? Jesus drank. Mm, true. A lot. Hmm. I think it helps us to be better people. My father drinks. Mm. Well, if Jesus drank... Two highballs! And finally bring up that her father drinks, which seems to convince him to get shit-faced drunk, subsequently turning him into an alcoholic and finally tell her something she's been dying to hear for seemingly her whole life. <laughs> well, I gotta tell you, Miss Hyman Tact, you have really helped me get out of my shell. What did you say? I said I gotta tell- and No, after that! Uh, out of my shell? No, before that! You have really- Almost there! Lee helped- That's it! Helped! I helped you! <laughs> Yeah. But Liberta's plan slash perception of Clay crashes when she finds out that he doesn't want to get married. He just wants to be home alone with the Bible, but is open to dating women that aren't her because he can't catch a hint and selfishly taking her highball, which pisses Liberta off until she runs up and socks him in the jaw after watching him make a fool of himself on the dance floor. Now, Liberta could have and really should have just left Clay there and try again with the new man. But she doesn't. She instead manipulates him and kind of begs Clay to marry her immediately. And before they've even said their wedding vows, they were completely stuck and miserable together. You gotta feel at least a tad bit bad for Bloberta, but not too bad. She literally ruined Clay's life by taking away whatever hopes and dreams he had when they got married and making him to an alcoholic on top of the whole mess. Now let's learn about Clay's life through passing. King Saul fell on his sword when it all went wrong. And Joseph's brothers sold him down the river for a song. Clay was raised as a child who was spoiled rotten by his mother, who was a religious zealot, while his dad was completely ignored by his own wife. His mom was extremely sensitive because she unfortunately miscarried all ten of his siblings, which led her to obsess over her only living child ever. But Clay is obviously a narcissistic child until he learns that he was supposed to have ten siblings, and of course, taking the news pretty bad, shown in an uncomfortable scene of him first learning he was supposed to have the siblings and that his ten past siblings didn't mean that he was his mom's precious only ever, causing him to run off and shoot himself to scare his parents, but his little prank ends up giving his mom a heart attack so she passes away, leaving Clay and his dad, who now absolutely hates his son for killing his mother. Clay's dad almost hits Clay out of anger the first time, but stops himself saying, You're not even worth it. Not worth it? To Clay, who obviously internalizes it for the rest of his life and actually wants his dad to hit him because he sees it as a sign of love from his dad who genuinely fucking hates him so much that he cancels the hunting trip that they would take as father and son leaving Clay alone in his father's study to promise to keep the tradition going with his son. That was another doozy, but we finally know more about Clay's life and what made him to such a monster. His mom died when he was a child, so his dad blamed and hated him. He got addicted to alcohol by a woman who manipulated him into marrying her, and he got cheated on by said woman, leading to an illegitimate kid with the man he actually loves. I hate Clay, but you can't help but feel bad for the guy. You say it wouldn't work, it wouldn't take, it wouldn't do- Now onto the last final three episodes of the original series. 
Sacrifice takes place on Easter Sunday, so of course everyone is at church, except for Clay, who's busy waiting outside the bar to open up and immediately starts drinking and ranting about him sacrificing his happiness for the sake of his kids and how he would do it all over just for them. Reverend Putty shows up to the bar after the fallout of his relationship with Florence from Sunday, immediately getting assessed by Clay who obviously realizes that something went on between the two, and argues with Reverend Putty about how Jesus had it better than him, because he didn't have to support a family. They're joined by Officer Papermouth who confides in the Reverend, while Clay makes things worse by taunting the two men constantly about Florence moving on and how Reverend Putty is desperate for her. Dr. Potter's wheel enters the bar, who if you don't remember technically had an affair with Blaberta. Which makes Clay slowly pick at the man about his wife who died because she didn't notice she was in so much pain from the painkiller she was given. Clay goes off subconsciously talking about how he's tapped completely out of his marriage, how he's just completely given up but he's worried he'll only care about Liberta when it's too late in their relationship and now that he has her, he just doesn't want anyone else to have her even though he hates her. Out of a fear of losing her and looking like a failure of a man, scared to be a weak human being, but you end up being a monster who poisons everyone and everything around you, no matter if you care about them or not. Clay goes on to provoke everyone else in the bar who are about to attack him, but then they realize that's exactly what he wants, and they back off and leave him all alone screaming for them to hit him, to validate him, to show him that he's worth something. This episode ends with Blaberta tearing up the house, looking for Dr. Potter's wheel handkerchief, with Shapey saying his first coherent sentence in the whole series. No one's there. Handkerchief! Gosh. Handkerchief! He's handkerchief. gotta come home on Easter and all. Handkerchief! 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 Mommy. Handkerchief! Not now, Shapey! No milk. When I'm thirsty, it feels how I feel when I'm alone. What? Golly, things sure have changed around here. And oral commenting on how things have changed in the house while we watch Clay drive to the nature reserve to retrieve the bear oral killed. Clay breaking down in this episode about his failure about being a husband and father because Blaberta went out and cheated on him twice already and his son absolutely hates him is great to watch because it's written and voiced so well by Scott Adstead, so big props to him. Nesting really comes out of nowhere if I'm being honest, and that's mainly due to the show being cancelled and the creators not being able to flesh out Miss Censorell's takeover of Moralton, or even Clay being the mayor of Moralton. Nesting is about Clay and Oral finally getting into their first fight about Oral helping Miss Censored all run for mayor, which will obviously leave Clay out of a dead end job, but Oral doesn't care about his dad being bad or lecturing or the possibility of getting punished because he knows his dad is just a terrible man. At the mayoral debate, Miss Censored all reads Clay almost immediately as a having an edifice complex, so ew. And she takes advantage of that when she drops out of the election, leaving Clay confused who of course goes to Oral for the answers, all while giving him fake apologies so he can learn what Censored All is up to, but Oral at first doesn't care until his dad scares him with his twisted sense of the truth, but Oral doesn't even know what she's up to, which leads Clay to take back his fake apologies and tell Oral, And I'm glad I shot you! The episode ends in winter. Christmas to be exact, where Miss Censordall and Clay talk about her dropping out of the election, but Censordall just takes advantage of Clay's edifice complex, you know, again, and he's literally that TikTok audio. Gross. I have nothing to say because ew and good job for Oral not taking your dad's bullshit anymore. Let's get on to the last episode of more Oral. I have faith in you. It's not your time, my valentine, it's not your time, my valentine. Ooh. 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 
Honor takes place exactly a year after the best Christmas ever, and right after nesting, where we see Oral have his cast taken off, but learning he's going to be limping for the rest of his life, due to the bones shattering after getting shot by Clay. And Oral has to walk home alone in the snow because Clay is at the bar with Danielle, who witnesses Clay and Censor Doll's affair, which leads him to realize that he has an obviously unhealthy obsession with Clay. Oral feels guilty for not honoring his father, so he seeks out advice from Jesus, but ends up getting advice from Reverend Putty go see Danielle to find a reason to honor Clay. Danielle is genuinely at a loss for words when Oral shows up, looking like an actual person and asking for a reason to honor Clay. But Danielle invites Oral to talk it over with him after school, before Clay calls him and completely disregards Danielle trying to tell him that he doesn't want Clay to come over to his place later in the night. When Oral and Danielle try to talk about what's honorable about Clay, Danielle just doesn't have an answer for Oral, so he continues to delay it by just doing merrily things for Christmas, all while Clay watches the two, getting more and more jealous of Danielle and Oral actually bonding like a father and son. Clay runs home to drag the family Christmas caroling, which is just a ruse so he can go to Danielle's house where him and Oral are decorating Christmas tree until Oral realizes from a photo of Danielle and Clay that Danielle likes Clay the same way Bluberta should like him which Danielle responds asking if Bluberta actually likes Clay. Oral is obviously upset that his dad isn't good or honorable, until Danielle tells him that the most honorable thing Clay has ever done is make Oral, which is a sweet moment, but it's unfortunately cut by Clay barging in with the rest of the family and accidentally confessing his love to Danielle, who just simply states, Come on, Dad. It's late. No! He's right. It's too late. Yeah. We hear Reverend Putty's voiceover about family and how they're just usually people who get stuck together, but sometimes there's an actually happy and healthy family. Showing Oral grow up and have that actually happy and healthy family with Christina from Lord's Prayer, along with the credits showing Oral pack up his stop motion set and give them to Shapey and Block for Christmas. I know the show was cancelled like seriously suddenly by Adult Swim, but this is the best ending the show could have written for itself because Oral thankfully stopped the cycle of abuse and learned that he's the best thing to come from his awful dad. I would talk about abstinence, but that's more of a Doey episode until the end where Oral and Doey just go off to play together like kids, which would have been a cute memory grown up Oral would have had. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to look at you when you're not there It's that everything's great not because I don't care And even if it ain't, there's room enough to ah! spare So in 2012, more Oral came back for a 20-minute special detailing when Oral was 4 years old and how he got sent off to spend some time with his grandpa. And this episode is genuinely my favorite because it's just so cute and it's a glimpse of what the 4th and 5th season of the show could have been. Oral as a child was completely gullible, which led to his friends to exploit his gullibility a lot. And we also see Bluberta get pregnant with Shapey, ew, and how Clay didn't want to teach Oral anything at all, even when Bluberta urged him to teach him things. But Clay just sends Oral off to his father's place while Bluberta and Clay deal with expecting a new kid. Oral and his grandpa spending time together is genuinely really cute, with Oral learning tons of new things and learning about proof in this really cute scene. Grandpa, am I stupid? Well, Oral, as crazy as this sounds, I'd like to think you're not. But my friends back at home said I was. Well, I say you're not. Great! I mean, I do have proof if you want it. What's proof? Well, it's a fact to make sure that something's true. Oh. Okay. What's your proof that I'm not dumb, Grandpa? Well, Oral... Do you remember how I said chickens were made? Yeah, nature. That's right! And that makes you not stupid. Yay! But, but, Oral, Oral, sometimes people lie. Lie? You don't know that word either, huh? Ah, <sighs> lies are things that aren't real. Oh. You know, you have faith in people. Wow. I have a faith? Uh, yeah, uh, forget I used that. Miss Censored All calls Clay and scares him into teaching Oral about God, with the threat of protesting his next election, a bit before he goes to pick up Oral from his father's house. Oral and his grandpa go over his lesson about trust with Oral, saying that he can always trust his grandpa because, well, he's his grandpa. While Wilberta gives birth to Shapey, Clay realizes that it's the time to teach Oral about God, 
getting upset when Oral says his grandpa taught him about nature and proof, so he brings Oral to church for the first time. But Oral asks if God is a lie, which obviously upsets Rever and Putty and Miss at all, so they both try to put the fear of God into Oral, which works, but Oral misinterprets the story of Abraham along with it. After writing a letter to his grandpa detailing how his dad brainwashed him into believing his grandpa is bad and how all the things his grandpa told him shouldn't be listened to anymore, and how Oral is going to reenact the story of Abraham with his brother Shapey. Oral's grandpa stops Oral at the last second from killing Shapey, which finally gets Clay and his father talking about his upbringing and how Clay's father blames him for how Clay raised Oral. Oral pretends to follow his dad's orders not to trust his grandpa anymore, but of course Oral still trusts his grandpa deep down, and in a really sweet closing scene we hear Oral's grandpa say how Oral is too much of a truly good kid to be corrupted like everyone else in Moralton. Dear Oral, always remember son, even though you are the perfect candidate for brainwashing in this town, you are also too pure and good hearted to be corrupted. Love. Grandpa. Well, why not trust? So what's a fool? Which stays true to the end of Oral's journey as a person that was shown in honor. And with that, we have the official end of Moral Oral, a show that humanizes awful people without giving them a pass for what they did, and showing that you can break the cycle of abuse in your family and not become the awful people that came before you. Man, I don't care about this fucking abusive dad. I care about the lesbian down the street. God damn. Stop being so fucking gay about Christians, you pride pin stealer!